Welcome to the Allison Bramlett Podcast. So glad that you're joining us today. Like, share, rate, review. Yeah, all the stuff you know to do. I am just really excited um, about a word that I believe the Lord personally has just given me. I've been studying it for a few weeks, and really it's just been growing in me, and it's about our locker room conversations. So just recently have I watched a little more football than normal. So I'm the person that really likes to watch a game if I know who's playing in it. So if I go to your kid's game and I know you and I know your kid, I'm going to cheer for you. I'm going to scream for them. I like that. I like a personal game. And um, so for me, when my kids played, my daughter was a basketball player. My son played baseball and different stuff. My husband played football and baseball. Um, Those were more fun to me because I could actually, yeah, cheer for them. But I was thinking about how we have locker room conversations in our life. And if you lose a game and there's a a losing and locker room conversation, you know what happens? You go in, they're depressed, they're quiet, they're frustrated, they're angry, they're disappointed. Sometimes they're having tantrums, sometimes they're isolating, sometimes they're blaming other people. And it's really like this naysaying personality that comes out. And for me in my own life, I've heard the Lord say, Allison, there's times that you've had a negative losing team locker room where you've seen everything through fear. You've seen everything through frustration. Um, You've not actually let me say we win. And I know the Word of God. I know that it says we win. So I know the economy. I know um, the elections. I know that even people or my education, the things around me, should not affect what I believe is happening in my life because at the end, I know that we have the winning team. I know that in Christ, that He works all things to my good. What the enemy meant for my harm, He will turn it to my good. And so when I, it says I'm the head and not the tail, I'm above and not beneath, and I've read the end of the book, but those things that I really don't believe God's word on, that I'm not saying that's a truth to me, I'll have a losing a locker team mentality in. And I've done that before in my finances. I've done it before in my family and my marriage. I've done it in relationships, business. You know, maybe even a church atmosphere. I thought, man, that's, that's not who we are. But God says we win. And praise actually steals the avenger. Praise is where there's power at. And, you know, in Philippians 4, it says to go and make our request on the Lord, but with thanksgiving. And so that means that I have a winning attitude in a learning moment. I don't believe that we lose as believers. I think we have the opportunity to learn. And like DJ Colley says, I believe all we do is win, 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 no matter what, because that's who Jesus is to us. A winning locker room you go into, and man, people are cheering. They're high-fiving. They're saying great play. They're telling the guy that messed up, it's okay, you're going to get it next time, because they don't feel the loss. They feel the learn. And when you get to life and you begin to look at yourself like that, I believe it changes the atmosphere. I believe today you need to tell your the team you work with. I think you need to tell, um, if you're in a relationship, your partner. I believe you need to tell your children, your family, your friends. We're winning. And let's begin to high five. Let's begin to change the atmospheres. So I have recently started watching football um, a little bit just to try to relate to some friends. They were talking. I thought, okay, I'm going to watch the team. I wanted to connect with them. So I watched the football game. And this whole thought process, and it was hard for me. I did not enjoy it probably as much as everyone else because, well, I I cheered for the team, but I thought, man, I don't really know anybody playing there. I kind of like that local level just a little bit better. And so even though I was cheering on the Dirty Birds, because I'm from Georgia now and I'm I'm doing my thing, I actually thought, well, I'm believing the Holy Ghost cleans them up, but I'm believing they win and things happen. But I thought, I wish I knew someone. Do you know that when you invest in someone, you cheer for them better? And when they fall down, you want them to get back up. When you actually have that personal relationship. Well, the Lord has a personal relationship that He wants to have with you that He knows that you can win, that He's always for you, and He's always cheering you on. So Deuteronomy 33, it's actually a sermon that I just preached recently at our church. And um, I just have to keep going on about it because it's about how 10 guys, 10 negative guys, 10 naysayers, stopped a whole generation and a whole generation is lost in the wilderness because of 10 negative things except for the two that had the good report here's my question what if that generation would have listened to the good report they could have been saved what are you listening to what are you feeding yourself 
What is going on in your life? Who are you tuning? Are you in the losing team locker room? Or are you in the winning team? Those 10 guys that went in and spied out Canaan had a losing locker room mentality. But Joshua and Caleb, they were on the winning team. And because of that, they actually win in life. They actually take the promised land. You know, it says in Deuteronomy 33 that it was an 11-day trip. Because God did want to take them around through the wilderness because he wanted to do some purification in their life. He wanted to get some Egypt out of them. But they didn't let that happen. Even after 40 years, some of them still died in the wilderness because they still had Egypt in them. Didn't mean they were back in Egypt, but they didn't get the Egypt out. The Egypt in you is the murmuring, is the complaining, is the insecurity, is the unforgiveness, is the anger, is the addiction, is the frustration. It's the complacency. It's the apathy. It's all those things that are going on. And the Lord's saying, that's not the promised land living that I've got for you. Stop going around the same mountain. Let's break camp. Let's take territory. And let's go where God's calling us to be. So today, I just want to kind of encourage you. Check your conversation and ask yourself, am I a positive locker room cheerleader, player, teammate, or am I a naysayer? Do I say what they say? Or do I say what God says? And when you say what God says, that means you win. And that means not only do you know you win, you can cheer for other people because you know they're going to win too. Because he says that when he starts that work in you, he's going to complete it till it's good. And good's winning. So today I'm praying for you. I believe that God is um, speaking to you, that Holy Spirit is. Read Deuteronomy 33. Read it in all different translations. See what the Holy Spirit tells you. What mounts have you been going around? What do you need to break camp from? Who are you following? What voices are you following? And then actually, what are you saying as you're leading others that are around you today? God bless you. I can't wait to hear from you. If you're ever in the area, come see us at Covenant Church. Our hearts and our doors are open there. I have the honor and privilege to pastor with my parents, Gregory and Jackie, and work with the greatest team in the world, taking territory for the kingdom. We love you and God bless.